Okay. Right, I'm filming this on my camera, so I'm not too sure what the quality um, or sound is going to be like compared to all my other videos, which have been here taken on my iPhone. But I'm back home now, so I have access to my laptop and my camera, so I'm making videos this way instead, depending on how it goes. Um, so I thought I would make a video about how I. Oh my God, I don't know where to look. This is so weird. <laughs> I feel like I should look here, but then it looks like I'm looking right at you. Um, anyway, so I thought I'd make a video about how I plan for my long-term travel trips. Um, I'm not a massive planner. Um, I'm very like wing it, um, go wherever, you know, everything's very loose but obviously some planning still needs to be involved. Um, so this is kind of like how to plan for long-term travels if you're not really a really rigid planner, but still sort of things that you need to be aware of because some things on my first um, round of travels around Asia a couple years ago caught me off guard and I just didn't think about like visas and stuff like that, which ended up being you know, it just cost me more money to sort it out when I was there and stuff like that. So the first thing is obviously you need to decide where you want to go. For me, I think I've now decided that my next trip is going to be in South America. This is actually the hardest part for me because there's so many places that I want to go and I feel like there's such little time. Um, so yeah, deciding where you want to go. So I have written out, this isn't for this video, this is for myself. I've got my little map of South America, cute, um, with all the names of the countries that I want to go to on, um, just so I have, I'm a pretty visual person, um, so just so I have like a visual plan of where I want to go and if you're into like manifestation and stuff like that, which I am then it helps to just look at it and like materialize it into reality towards. So I've just written some notes on my phone so that I can um, remind myself. So yeah, one, deciding the countries or continent, like where you wanna go, a loose plan. I'd say have a loose plan because sometimes when you're there, you fall in love with places, you wanna stay there for like two months things just don't happen the way you want them to or someone's going there you want to go there with them whatever so it's good to have a loose plan but obviously be flexible on that um, then once I've decided the country that I want to go to I'll try and work out if I have any connections or people there I mean you can go on YouTube and Google and all, all, all of that but I think it's best to speak to somebody who's actually there who's traveled there um, or who's there at the minute so I've got a friend who's in Mexico at the minute I spoke to him, asked him some questions because um, yeah sometimes you find stuff on Google or websites and it's not really how it is or like it's the official but it's not how it actually is when you get there so I find people who I know who's maybe travelled there or who's there at the minute and I reach out to them and just speak to them about it um, and see what their recommendations are, um, that kind of thing. So like for me, I want to go to South America next, there's quite a few people I know who've travelled there so I was speaking to them about it and just getting the load down and like, yeah, that kind of thing. Um, then what do I look? I will look and Google travel routes. So if you just Google, like I think to start out, I just Googled South America routes, itinerary, whatever. And then I'll look at the individual countries. And like I said, it's just to get a basic idea for what you want to do. Because you'll find places and you're like, I really want to go there. Yeah, yeah. So you have things that you really want to do and you have things that are fluid, but just to look at like general routes so you kind of know where you're going, what you're going to be doing um, 
and you can have a loose plan for everything. So yeah, looking at the big route for the continent you're going to and then looking at the route for the actual country. So for me, I've like obviously written all these out, then I'll look at like, so say the first country I wanna to go to is Mexico. I'll have a look at, you know, where, I don't know anything about Mexico really. All I know is about Tulum. And so yeah, I'll have a look at where it's good to go there. What, like, find out a bit more about the country, about the backpacker routes, about this kind of thing. Getting a feel for like where you wanna go, the kind of basic route that you wanna go. Like for me, it's probably gonna be going north to south in all of the countries and then working out like from Mexico which country I'll go to and in that process I'll have a look at um, the best ways to travel um, so I'll have a look oh yeah the best way to travel is buses trains flights whatever I like traveling by land so and that's normally the cheapest normally the most regular normally the easiest to book um, and do last minute and I'm quite a last minute person when I'm traveling I don't generally like pre-book things that much um, I kind of have it in my head and then just maybe book it the day before or just kind of turn up so yeah while I'm doing that process I'll have a look and just check about buses and I know that most countries have really good transport so like Asia I just got buses everywhere and they're really regular so I'll just have a look at the different ways of actually traveling around and getting from A to B. Um, this is maybe one of the most important ones but looking at visas. So I got caught out in Asia with this a few times just because this was my first, I was like a baby traveller, I didn't really know about visas and stuff like that and it sounds really stupid but um, I just didn't think about it and like with, I have a UK passport so with that you'll normally, a lot of places you get entry to, like once you get there you can get the visa or um, you get certain days free but like when I went to Vietnam I had 14 days free but I wanted to stay for a month so then I ended up having to sort it out when I was there which ended up costing me like 150 quid and then it was just a bit of a mess I could have saved myself money I could have saved myself I had to do a border crossing to, to, to do all that so it was just it was just drama basically um, so look up the visa requirements for wherever you want to go um, because if you get caught out with that you're kind of screwed like if you turn up at a country and you don't have the right visa and that kind of thing then you're potentially not going to let in or get a fine or this kind of thing so definitely check the visa requirements for where you want to go beforehand a lot of those can be sorted out prior to going or you can just sort it out there um, but depending on what passport you have and where you're going, oftentimes you can just go in for a certain amount of days. Like Thailand, I think most people, you get a tourist, you can just go in for 30 days. Like you don't need to sort anything out, but other countries you do. So obviously you need to check, especially for places like more westernized developed countries. There's definitely, like I know like I haven't been personally, but Australia and New Zealand and stuff like that is there's a process and it's expensive and it requires some forward planning so definitely sort out visas before you go or at least know and understand the requirements that is a big one I've messed that up I mean when you get there there's people that will help you and stuff like that but it can just all be sorted out before like in Thailand I could have got myself before when I went a six month visa but I didn't and then I had to do loads of crossings and it just was time and money and it was just a faff like I mean it added to the experience and everything but why why waste your time and money if you can just sort it out beforehand then I look at costs um, 
obviously you're going to need to work out how much money you need to take, how much you need to save. So I'll look at um, what like the general costs are for accommodation, food, travel, this kind of thing. Um, I'm not personally someone who goes and spends money on doing like tours and excursions and um, that kind of stuff. I just kind of do my own thing. Sometimes I, I will, but obviously if you're gonna do that kind of stuff, look into that as well. Um, so yeah, I just look at that and then try and work out how much money I'm gonna need per month to do what I wanna do. And I'll have a look at places on Airbnb, I'll have a look at places on booking.com um, to see how much places are for a night, how much places are for a month, um, just to get a feel. And then, yeah, look at food and accommodation is probably going to be your main expense, so that's like the main thing you need to look at. And then off that, obviously, you can work out how much money you're going to need per month, how much money you're going to need to save. Um, and then start saving and the thing we look at is looking at like work, workaways, um, volunteer stuff. I think workaway is a pretty good site um, if you're more budgeted <clears throat> or doing long term travel it can be really good because you can get opportunities where you can go and live with someone and then you work like five days a week and then you get free accommodation, um, free food mostly and I think there's even some paid opportunities on there. Um, so I have a look at Workaway, what kind of things are available and there might be things that you really want to do on there like, I don't know, you might want to go and learn about permaculture and go and work on a farm. So have a look at where you're going and have a look at the work. So Workaway, if you don't know what it is, is a website, workaway.com, I think it is. I'll put the link in the bio. I think you have to sign up in order to, and there is a fee in order to message people about opportunities um, but just to browse you can just do it for free I always just have a look on there um, see what kind of things are available because obviously that's a really good way to travel on the cheap and on a budget um, so work away have a look at that if you want to do long-term traveling and you're maybe on a bit more of a budget or you just want to experience some of that stuff like there's some really really cool opportunities and stuff on there check the weather and the best times to go um, obviously I live in the UK so we don't have extreme seasons I mean winter is super long and cold but it's not like Asia where you have like a rainy season obviously if you don't research that and you turn up in rain rainy season then it's gonna be a bit of a Summer if you wanted to be like on the beach all day um, so yeah have a look at the weather and the best times to go obviously as well you might not want to go in like the extreme heat so definitely have a look at the best time of year and the, the best seasons and months to go to wherever it is you're going so that you can get the be best weather and get whatever you're trying to get out out of um, your time let's say once you have worked out the costs start working out a budgeting plan set a date that you want to go or you want to leave by and then start putting everything in motions look at flights out there um, look at insurance um, start thinking about what you may be going to need to take like if you're going to use a backpack or what kind of things i would say don't pack that much if you're anything like me and you're just kind of like slumming it and on a budget firstly you're going to buy stuff out there like the clothes out there are amazing especially in Asia you can buy such nice things for so cheap and they have the things that are like suitable to their weather so when I first went to Asia I packed all these little like tops and shorts and it's actually too hot to wear that kind of thing I ended up buying most of the stuff that I wore there like linen trousers this kind of thing really cheap like five quid um, and then I ended up just chucking like my own stuff away so leave space in your backpack for stuff because you're gonna see amazing beautiful clothes out there I'm gonna be like so much cheaper and they're gonna be more suitable for like the place that you're in kind of thing yeah that's kind of how I start planning for my trips 
and then I just get a date in mind and then that's me. Um, yeah, travel routes, planning where you're gonna go. Um, I guess key things that you wanna do. Um, my travel plans are super fluid. Um, I just kind of go with the flow and have an idea of certain things or places that I really want to go but honestly I wouldn't say like book things in advance because it just doesn't work. Um, another tip is don't book more than two nights at a hostel. Go to places, see what it's like and then decide if you want to stay longer if you want to go. Um, it's so easy to move around in these countries. They have really good transport. There's loads of places to stay like in In all these typical kind of like backpack places and travel places, so Just stay fluid um, Yeah, that's that's basically it I think um, I'm sure there's stuff that I've missed out, but I think that's a general overview but yeah I hope this video is useful to somebody and um, you can follow me on Instagram at daisybl and feel free to message me or leave a comment and if you want to like and subscribe thank you for watching if you made it this far and yeah 